substance misuse can happen to anyone. Although this is true, some individuals, like pregnant people and parents, face additional challenges in obtaining quality care. This video highlights best practices implemented by tribal staff, IHS health providers, and tribal law enforcement at Red Lake Nation. It contains practical advice for encouraging pregnant people and parents with substance use disorders to seek services. It also offers suggestions for improving client outcomes using a holistic cross-systems approach. Currently, we're seeing people that are misusing opioids. They're using narcotics like heroin, fentanyl, methamphetamine, and alcohol too. Really important thing to remember when we're working with patients with substance use disorder is that they're somebody's mom, somebody's sister, somebody's cousin. Everybody has a story associated with what has led them to this point. Healthcare providers should understand that treating patients with a substance use disorder is not unlike treating patients with any other chronic illness or disease. We saw data that identified disparities of Native American women in our area as using opioids illicitly, either during their pregnancy or at delivery. We knew from trending numbers of babies who were in the nurseries dealing with like neonatal abstinence syndrome that it was becoming more and more of an issue. Helping Hands was developed to start looking at substance use in pregnancy. We were seeing a lot of women that were staying away from care programs because they were afraid of having a punitive approach. When we started our meetings for Helping Hands, we reached out to local service area providers, Indian Health Service, Behavioral Health Department, law enforcement, courts, our jails, our Family and Children's Services program, basically anybody that would have some interaction with that population. We invited them to the table to talk about what they were seeing and how they were responding, what services they were offering, how we could collaborate and refer individuals back and forth to each other. And we would talk about barriers as well. You know, living in a rural area, we, we have a lot of barriers, transportation, housing, childcare. We were just trying to brainstorm how we could reduce those barriers to make sure that these parents were able to get the resources that they needed. I think that if it wasn't for the Helping Hands meetings, there would have probably been a lot of deaths here in Red Lake. What we did with that program at the time was educate our community how to use Narcan. Now the community has been trained and they're actually giving Narcan to people who are overdosing. In July 2017, the Red Lake Tribal Council declared a public health emergency in response to the opioid epidemic. This allowed for the quick expansion of services for community members impacted by opioid use disorder. Since then, Chemical Health Program staff and Red Lake IHS Hospital Health providers have worked to continuously improve the quality of care and access to services. One improvement was the creation of the Medication Assisted Recovery Services, or MARS, program. The MARS program is an outpatient suboxone dosing program with outpatient groups and one-on-one -on -one treatment. Individuals are coming in and they're meeting with our staff to do their treatment plans, developing their goals. They're meeting with our nurses and just determining like what their healthcare needs are. Before we offered medical assisted treatment, individuals would have to travel long distances to get those services. As an SUD treatment program, to meet state and federal guidelines, the MARS program needs both a medical diagnosis and a substance use disorder assessment to offer medications for opioid use disorders. At times, this delayed the initiation of services for clients who came to the MARS program already in mild to moderate withdrawal from opioids. Dr. Josephson was seeing a lot of pregnant people coming into her clinic that were at that point where they were looking for help and for that change. And at the time, the chemical dependency assessment called the Rule 25 needed to be done for appropriate treatment placement, but it takes time. And so Dr. Josephson was seeing these women come in looking for help. And by the time that got completed, they were losing motivation. 
to reduce wait times, Red Lake IHS hospital health providers, with the support of chemical health program staff and Red Lake's tribal council, began to provide medications to treat opioid withdrawal via bridging services. Here, outpatient clinical staff offered access to same-day evidence-based treatments to patients in withdrawal. Staff then worked alongside the MARS and other community programs to connect patients to the next step in care. So this idea of this bridging program is we can meet them here, we can meet them where they're at, and then we can help with whatever next steps may come. The bridging program allows our patients freedom. It takes them at a very vulnerable moment and provides them with a treatment option that's immediate. Nikki's role was as an RN and she would oftentimes see and assess our patients kind of independently, ask if it was appropriate for them to be starting medications and what that looked like from the provider's perspective, and she made it all happen. When they can come to me, they don't have to explain their story 30 different times to 30 different people. I know what they're there for, and then we can just take off with whatever direction we need to help them. So it just makes it easy, safe, and comfortable for that individual to come. My role is to act as a provider extender. I'm a pharmacist by training, and we work under a collaborative practice agreement with our medical staff that allows us to see patients and start medications, order labs. We can do all those things that you would get in a provider visit just faster. Teresa is super important in our bridging program. Um, as a behavioral health pharmacist, she not only can help, you know, address the substance use disorder, but she can help address other healthcare needs that might be important in the time, whether it's for mental or behavioral health or someone struggling with something as simple as their blood pressure on top of it. It functions as a one-stop shop. Based on best practices, we know an integrated, holistic approach to treating pregnant people and patients experiencing substance use disorders improves outcomes. At Red Lake Nation, staff connect pregnant and parenting people to a variety of community and clinical supports. These include inpatient and outpatient medical and behavioral health services, cultural and spiritual supports, and social services. Getting them connected not only with healthcare needs, but parenting classes or safe sleep, car seats, food access, diapers, it helps take the burden off of them so they can try to focus on what's really important in the moment. It helps set them up for more long-term success. Staff also prioritize pregnant people by connecting them with community resources, including the Pregnant Women and Families Program and the Family Spirit Program. Our pregnant women and families group meets on an outpatient basis. They're coming in and getting that treatment and getting services as well. The Family Spirit Program is a evidence-based uh, program and the curriculum is a 63 lesson curriculum with six components, prenatal care, my healthy child, infant care, toddler care, healthy living, and my family and me. The Family Spirit Program incorporates a referral process. I make referrals in our community to education, housing, food resources, and childcare. We have to serve as that connector for the person with substance use disorder to get engaged with those services. They may not know how to reach out to them, or they may not be able to reach out for them. So us as the connector is really important to help in their recovery journey. With the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, overdoses across the country and at Red Lake Nation increased, including overdoses among pregnant people and parents. Many patients landed in the ER following overdose. Seeing this trend, IHS hospital leadership recognized an opportunity to serve community members with SUDs at a critical time when they were motivated to seek treatment. At the time, Suboxone, which is one of the evidence-based treatments for opioid withdrawal, was only allowed to be prescribed by providers that had a particular license. And so there was a lot of confusion in our emergency department as to knowing who could and who couldn't do it and how long they could do it for and who they could treat. In order to clear all of that up, we developed an emergency room withdrawal policy. 
Working with our emergency department, we really had to spend some time educating staff that if we could get them medication for their opioid withdrawal symptoms before, when they're there now asking for it, it was gonna decrease the likelihood of them coming in for an overdose. So it was that warm handoff. They saw our face, they knew who we were when they came to see us the next day and the provider would help them feel better. So that space, right, that space became safe. Fear stops many pregnant people and parents with SUDs from accessing medical care and social services. This results in high numbers of pregnant people receiving little or no prenatal care. To encourage pregnant people and parents experiencing SUDs to access care, Red Lake staff use several strategies. What we want to do is we want to let them know that we are not there to judge, that we are going to help them every step of the way, you know, whether it's they need to go to court, they need to deal with family reunification, caseworkers, whatever that may be, that we're there for them, we're going to help guide them through those doors to make sure that they have a support system in place. The other things that we offer are outpatient groups, so individuals are able to come in um, and meet in a group setting with counselors and do their group treatment with the outpatient group. Um, we also have our pregnant women and families group that meets on an outpatient basis. They are come in and getting that treatment. We also offer peer recovery support specialists. They have that experience because they have lived through that lifestyle and they're able to connect with those individuals and develop that mutual understanding of where they're at and give some guidance, you know, just, or just listen. We also offer harm reduction kits for community members. A best practice Red Lake Nation is using to support pregnant people and parents involves collaborating with tribal law enforcement to decrease the use of punitive approaches. Criminalizing substance misuse causes pregnant people and parents to avoid seeking care for drug and alcohol use. It also causes them to fear disclosing their substance use to healthcare providers. The LEAD program, it's a voluntary program. The police officer can refer the client to the lead program and it's everything's completely voluntary. I call it a pre-adjudication program because we're in the front end of it. We want our clients to feel that we can help them get a fresh start and try and develop more of a support system for them to be successful in gaining sobriety. By our, our program and our case managers establishing relationships with other tribal programs, we can kind of cut through that red tape that, that a lot of people encounter themselves, trying to get themselves help. Fortunately, Red Lake Nation's approach is working. Together, the chemical health programs and bridging services alongside tribal law enforcement are helping many community members get into and stay in recovery. The individuals that are coming through our program, you know, sometimes they're coming in as clients and then they're moving into employees and then they're doing peer recovery support services for new clients that are coming in. We're seeing success that way, where they're being contributing members of our community versus somebody that was in active addiction. So we're definitely meeting a need in the community. The bridging program as a whole, you know, in six months, we increased patient visits by over 130%. In our emergency department in the year 2020, we increased Suboxone that was prescribed in the emergency department by 600%. What I love most about my job is being able to help people, give them the tools to, to help themselves. What I like about Red Lake Nation and how we take care of our families and our community with substance use disorders is that we respond in a way that is really caring. I love being able to help our community, being able to heal our community, being able to save people's lives. As tribal staff and health providers serving American Indian and Alaska Native communities, 
there are many actions we can all take to encourage pregnant people and parents with substance use disorders to seek care, and even more things we can do to ensure that they recover from substance use. This includes addressing common barriers to care, including transportation and childcare, as well as working to address fear and hesitancy around seeking services by building relationships with potential clients, prioritizing pregnant people and parents for treatment and care, forming relationships with law enforcement and the courts to redirect potential clients into care, and working to build trust with community members who use substances through offering harm reduction and peer support services, as well as making it a point to hire staff who are in recovery themselves. If you would like additional support learning how to manage patients with substance use disorders and implement best practices that support pregnant people and parents, Join other IHS tribal and urban Indian health providers in attending free telehealth echo clinics. Visit www.indiancountryecho.org or www.ihs.gov forward slash opioids for more information. For direct assistance, please email indiancountryecho at npaihb.org.